What is cancer? Well, cancer seems to be the unregulated proliferation of your own cells. These are not, this is not bacteria, this is not viruses. These are your own cells that are growing and growing. Now, what is an atavism? Our paper refers to an atavistic model. So what is an atavism? Well, our ancestors, our human an our ancestors had more than two nipples. Well, I have two nipples here. But our ancestors had more than that. They had nipples here, nipples here, along the, what's called the milk line. And they also had tails. And the ancestors of horses had three toes, and the ancestors of whales had hind legs. Now, humans with extra nipples and tails are sometimes born. Horses are sometimes born with three toes, and whales sometimes have hind legs. These are atavisms, or genetic throwbacks, or sometimes called reversions. And um, one way to understand that is that these are primitive traits that have not disappeared from the genome, but have been switched off during development in the normal organism. And when the off switches get damaged somehow, then the traits reappear, these atavistic traits. Now, for about a decade, we have been developing a model of cancer based on this idea of off switches getting damaged to reveal latent atavistic traits as a model for understanding the origin of cancer. So we call it the atavistic model, and it should be compared with the standard model, that is the somatic mutation theory, which I will call SMT for short. So these models are competing. Which is a better explanation for the origin of cancer? We think this one. Most people think that. So how is that? What are the differences between these models? Well, for one thing, evolution is a part of both of them. Evolution is the dominant ingredient in both models, but the time scales are different by a factor of a billion. For example, the evolution that occurs in the SMT model takes place over years. In the, atav in the atavistic model, the evolution that we're talking about is billions of years. So there's a factor of a billion in the time scale of the evolution we're talking about. Very big difference. Now, what else? How else are they different? Well, cancer cells we know have genetic alterations. And the interpretation of what the role of these genetic alterations is, is different in these two models. For example, in the SMT model, these alterations provide variety. This unlimited random mutations provide the raw material for selection. But in the atavistic model, these alterations are just damaged to the approximately 20,000 genes that we have in our body. Now what happens over here is when you have these mutations, you have clonal evolution that leads to fitness advantages for the cancer cells that are, make them more fit than your normal cells in your own body, and that's why they can take over. Here, in this model, we have loss of functions are controlled by the new genes. The new genes are getting damaged, and then the gain of functions are controlled by the old genes, which get less damaged. And this, re this results in an atavistic reversion to ancestral traits. And then both of them have to produce, of course, the cancer hallmark, which have been described so well by Hanahan and Weinberg over the years. But there's one point also worth mentioning, that over here you have to have convergent evolution. Because if you have random variation, how can you, how can you converge on these hallmarks without something called convergent evolution? Here the convergence is due because you're talking about pre-existing latent features that are already in the genome. You're not producing any new abilities over here. Okay, so. Because you have a billion years of evolution in the atavistic model, you need to know, well, which are the old genes and which are the new genes. And you can do that with a new technique. It, the fancy term for it is phylostratigraphy, but just call it getting gene ages. And how do you get that? Well, you find out, you pick a gene in the humans, and then you say, is that gene, is there a homologue in reptiles? And if there is, then that gene existed here 310 million years ago. And then you say, oh, is that gene in sharks? If it is, then it existed 480 million years, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then when you have no, you can't find it anymore, up, oh, that's how old the gene is. The, the, the age of the common ancestor of the two groups which both have it. So you can do that with all the 20,000 human genes and you get it ages. And the prediction of the atavistic model is that the new genes kind of get damaged more quickly and more often than the old genes. And so you have a reversion to the genes that are this old and you get rid of those. So that's how we talk, that's how we establish gene ages. And I said the fancy term for that is phylostratigraphy, and here's the phylogeny of our lineage along this red line. Okay, so in the atavistic model, you have the multicellular genes 
getting damaged, and then the cells revert in their physiology and their morphology to unicellular. But in our new paper, we develop this model and we make it more nuanced because why not take advantage of all these strata? And so we have the serial atavism model in which cancer progression is produced by the serial reversion to older and older traits. Um, and for example, one of the most important transitions is from unicellular prokaryote to unicellular eukaryote. And then, about a billion years ago, a transition in our lineage from unicellular eukaryote to multicellular eukaryote. And if we do that horizontal, here's the same thing. Phylogeny goes this way four billion years to today. And <laughs> there is a parallelism between phylogeny and ontogeny made famous or infamous by Haeckel about 150 years ago. And that is that ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. And there's some truth to that. And uh, for example, we start out as an egg and a sperm, and then it gets fertilized, and then you have blastula gastrulation, and then you have the differentiation of the different cells in your body. So you have a different cheek from your teeth, from your legs, from your liver. And then that's, what hap that's what's called differentiation, and you have different cell differentiation cascades as these stem cells mature into more differentiated cells that make up these organs that they need different types of cells. Well, in cancer, you, we, you have this de-differentiation, and that is these cellular cascades go backwards. So uh, the different kinds of cancer, of course, have, are start off in different places, liver cancer, colon cancer, et cetera. And so these cells that are differentiated here become less differentiated here and go backwards in time. Another way to picture this is, here's time going up. Here's an embryonic stem cell, and then we have normal lung tissue, which de-differentiates and goes towards an embryonic stem cell, same thing with liver cells. They're different, they're different from lung, but they take a pathway that leads them to converge on the abilities of embryonic stem cells. And over here, the time scale for this cancer progression is months to years. And ontogeny also takes about months to years. Cancer progression takes about the same amount. But phylogeny, to produce those differentiation cascades in the first place, takes four billion years. And we talk about the different cascades and the different transitions, and in particular, this, these two transitions here. Now, read the paper for the details. I'm sure I skimmed over things too quickly, and it's been a great, it's a great paper. And here are my co-authors. It's been a lot of fun dealing with Paul Davies, Kim Bussey, and Annika Blackburn to create this new serial atavism model.